friends namaste and welcome to our sunday edition of gyan ganga words of wisdom which we beam on our virat hindustan sangam social media channels of youtube facebook instagram and twitter periscope as you all know today is the 150th 105th episode of our regular series which we started in april 2020 during the pandemic and we are continuing it and we also have our saturday version of uh, gyan ganga words of wisdom first we had our 21 episodes of legal words of wisdom nyay gyan ganga and we have now started the last few uh, last few weeks we have started economic words of wisdom arth gyan ganga so we welcome you to do our sunday show uh, on our program and we welcome viewers across the globe who have been patronizing us today's topic is a very inter interesting and a current uh, issue topic covid management how the two largest democracies india and us are coping with and for this we have as usual our patron founder president dr subramaniam swami member of parliament and we have with us sri ayer from california usa we welcome him back to our show as you all know sri ayer is an author inventor and out of box thinker and he has 37 patents to his credit <laughs> and it is latest book as you must have seen national herald and <laughs> national herald for frauds and he has written past many books on various other frauds ndtv frauds yeah. rise and fall of aap who painted my money white who painted my lust red and c company <laughs> is one of the books which is all connected with fraud he is a expert in frauds so <laughs> we are here to the show uh, he is running a very popular website p gurus and a uh, lot of indians bureaucrats politicians and indians across the globe daily look out to this website to find interesting scandals or scams being broken and exposed and he is well versed with current issues in india so we have sri ayer and dr swami i have my co-host professor arvind chaturvedi from delhi and ramesh swami from the us and i have with us to, uh, to thank our technical team led by ashish shetty ishwar ayer vishal mehta tejas from pune rakesh gargi from karnataka and swami nathan from chennai for their support to put this weekly twice a week program together of saturday and sunday and thank you viewers for your support we have been getting for nearly last 13 months so with this opening remarks it will be over to dr swami to tell us a little bit on the topic we are discussing the covid management in india and abroad especially the us then we'll have a detailed discussion with sri ayer with others participating in the discussion and we taking some questions from the viewers over to dr swami thank you uh, thank you jagdish <coughs> and welcome to uh, sri ayer and uh, there are i think three ayers in this room uh, in this uh, <laughs> program uh, yeah, um, uh, sri ayer myself who don't use the Uh, ayer name and ramesh he is also an ayer no he is not a nayangar although no, he, a he is a 100% pure <laughs> unadulterated uh, tanjore tambram <laughs> okay uh, so um uh, i am first of all i would like to say it's a great pleasure to have uh, uh, sri ayer here uh, he has really blossomed when i first met him he was just uh, I, i had gone to california to address a meeting in uh, in the uh, uh area where the apple is being produced and uh, i met him and then uh, subsequent visit i stayed with him uh he has literally flowered from a pure scientist with uh, what 37 or now exceeding 40 uh, patents yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> i mean and uh, you know he gave it all up uh my, i didn't say that he hasn't given it all up but he just cut into his time what he's doing 
and is doing it purely for the benefit of Indians and the publications has come out as being scholarly, well documented and you know some things that we learn a lot from. So, um, I thought that he would be the best person to uh, tell us a critical analysis uh, of the comparison between the United States and India in dealing with this uh, corona pandemic uh, issue. Uh, I thought I would uh, first uh, bring uh, some up to date facts because I am a member of the parliamentary standing committee on the Ministry of Health. And that committee, although we are not allowed to publicize what we learn there, but it is a, a briefing that takes place uh, beyond the eyes of the media. And uh, that briefing is uh, also subject to questioning. So, therefore, uh, um, I, you know, during this whole period, uh, we, uh, I have been questioning, I have been getting facts out and so on. And I am happy to say that one of the things that came out of the committee is, is the fact that we were planning to ditch or dump or at least uh, keep back this um, co-vaccine that is the, uh, the Bharat uh, Biotech uh, Swadeshi producers of the vaccine, which is a vaccine which uh, has now a reputation of having no casualties at all. And uh, whereas the, all the others are in some controversy or the other. And uh, now the government first didn't want to announce his name, then I made a big um, big stink about it. And then the late night, the same day, the government also uh, announced that they will also be uh, permitted to produce vaccines. And now the government is totally relying on them to make up for the deficit that we are having. Uh, and uh, in fact, they're being asked to produce 7 million, uh, 7 million vaccines uh, uh, by, uh, by June. And uh, they are asked, being asked by July, 10 million, you know, they, these numbers are there. And uh, they are, they're, they're the company is working valiantly. So, in the background, uh, we have uh, the uh, Oxford AZ, uh, AstroZeneca, which has gone through a lot of difficulty with many countries. One country is outright banned it, and that is Denmark. And there are about at least 25 countries in Europe uh, and, and in the... North American countries, uh, which have put it on hold or pause and things like that. But we are continuing with it. And of course, there is an argument uh, that uh, you have a risk of, uh, of having uh, COVID and, uh, you know, dire consequences of that. Or you have a risk of taking uh, um, uh, this COVID shield, uh, which is uh, Oxford uh, AZ. Uh, and uh, suffering some consequences from that. So, you have to balance the probabilities in life, you have to balance, so it is an argument, I have not, uh, uh, you know. So, therefore, in India, we are continuing to you give it uh, and uh, saying that, this, you know, there is a risk, but, uh, you know, that risk is better than, uh, smaller than the risk that you would have if you were uh, not to take any vaccine at all, or you were not in a position to get any other vaccine because of short supply. So, in that thing, we, we uh, before the vaccines came in, on February 1st, 2021, a uh, little less than a year since uh, we recognized the, uh, uh, the uh, corona virus and, uh, and the pandemic and then had this lockdown in the end of March, uh, we had reached uh, in uh, February 1st, 2021, a low um uh, you know um, new uh, um, uh, cases of 5300 and then people thought that you know it's been going down steadily and it'll probably go down to zero that was the expectation but by august uh, by april 13 it uh, rose to 180000 from 5300 and now uh, it is running at 2000 uh, 200 uh, Two and a half lakhs, and they say that by the end of this month it will be four lakhs. That's huge, and the pitiable conditions you see in crematoriums, you see it in burial grounds, you see it in in hospitals. Uh, it's a you know a very sad, uh, and on top of that, we are now uh, bringing in a lockdown. So the migrant laborers again who came back, 
uh, are now started to go back. It's a, it's a royal mess that we are in. And I hope, uh, the, you know, the government comes up with a, a plan by which all this can be done. Now, there has been poor planning and there have been some, some very silly things to be have, we have done. We have exported more vaccines produced in India than we have used it in India. Why? Because the foreign minister says uh, when we show empathy abroad, it improves our, uh, our uh, relations. Uh, I mean, I, this is a strange way of doing it. No other country is doing it. The United States is not doing it. Why we should be doing this? Why should we send a larger amount abroad uh, than uh, uh, that we are giving uh, than we are giving our own people? So this is one thing that shows some. There is some problem of mentality which needs to be cured, and I think we have to get to the bottom of this. Who made the decision? Why was it made? And uh, what are the counter arguments, if any? The second thing is these election rallies. They are now. Uh, c creating the this this uh, this uh, rapid rise. I mean, there I don't understand why in this area, the age of uh, online and so on, why we must have people brought by bus and trucks and so on to attend. The bigger the rally, the more uh, important the rally is, and uh, so that has caused a lot of things. Then these religious functions. I don't think we should have in the very beginning, we should have told uh, the Kumbh Mela people that you do some sadhus sit down and do it and then we will get the prasad and we will distribute it around the country. But there was no, no necessity for having so many people turn up uh, for, for Kumbh Mela at this particular juncture. I am sure the gods will understand, gods only help those who help themselves. The god does not come and protect you if you do foolish things. So anyway, this is the other aspect. Then you have this cricket. What is the need for cricket in the, uh, this IPL? IPL is not even an international tournament in the formal sense. It's not a five-day match. It's a, a twenty-over match, and uh, we uh, for that the amount of I uh, think now of course they have started reducing the audience uh, levels. Uh, and uh, but the fact is that this is the kind of thing, you know, to say almost you are taken granted that your corona is nothing, it is all going and go, gone. So the collateral damage is being extensive. Uh, we have been hearing till we are sick that uh, the fin finance minister is saying green shoots, green shoots. Now I mean, I don't know what green shoots look like, but uh, I haven't seen any. And then it is V-shaped curve. Now I, the only thing that <laughs> people jokingly say that is V-shaped is the beard of Mr. Uh, Narendra Modi, uh, it, it looks a uh, V-shaped <laughs> um, beard. So uh, I, I don't understand. This is not the way e economics is, you know, to be treated. Uh, to talk in these terms of looking for shoots and uh, uh, you know that you are in a huge decline and then you are going to come up. So we are in this. Uh, consequently, our economy has gone uh, for a six or a, for a toss, and now we are in a situation where we are, uh, the government suddenly says we need to target 300 million people who will get uh, within, uh, uh, within, uh, 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 within a few months, they must be vaccinated. I mean, uh, one year and three months, they will be vaccinated. And that means 75% uh, 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 we want the, of the adults to be uh, vaccinated. But there is no such production uh, schedule. There is no transportation. In fact, the uh, bus transport people have contacted me saying that the government doesn't want to use us at all. They just want to use railways and aeroplanes. I mean, this is not a way. They, in fact, uh, it's more important that we go by road transport because then you can stop on the way and, and, and all district headquarters and so on. So this needs also to be resolved. So I'm bringing all this that uh, even if we today, uh, 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 we... Uh, vaccinate uh, 300 million people by uh, in a year and three months hence. The fact is that the people who have taken it now, they will all, because 8 to 12 months there, suppose you want to, you have to get a booster uh, injection again. So, uh, where is the emergency planning that has gone wrong? And this emergency situation naturally will need, of course, I am very confident India always overcomes because I remember. Uh, when I was teaching at Harvard in, in, this, uh, in the mid-60s, 
people said India will have massive famine because that time the rains had fallen and had uh, failed and India was depending on PL 480 ships and their uh, New York Times head is, headline was Indians are living from uh, ship to mouth. Uh, you know, that's in a derogatory way that we had no grains and we are like beggars waiting and uh, were waiting for uh, ships to come in there. But in, uh, within a short period, Lal Bahadur Shastri did something very ordinary of producing a package. 10% of the farmers used it and we became self-sufficient. Today, we don't import uh, food grains. Uh, we export food grains, in fact. So, we, uh, Indians are capable of solving problems. We were told you can never grow faster than 3.5% per year. But in Narsimha Rao's period, we proved you can grow at 8% without difficulty. In my opinion, country must grow at 10 to 12% per year for 10 years. Then only we will be a real global economic power and we will overtake China in the process. And, and if we, uh, we develop our innovational uh, skills, which Indians abroad are demonstrating without any government support, uh, if we can do it in our country, uh, and then of course with that help of the Indian, you get a huge boost. And we will become uh, challenges to the Americans because the American strength is innovation, nothing more. Every progress, every stage of progress and jumps that they have got is because of some new innovation, the last one being, of course, the internet. So, um, uh, I am saying it is in this context. I want to know what is the American experience and what is, um, I should call him a doctor because he, is, uh, he does not need a formal, uh, you are not yet gone for a PhD yet, right? Am I right? You got no, I did so not many, get my PhD, yeah. There you are. But you have got so many innovations. I think you can give PhDs now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, learned man, he studied America, he knows India. So his uh, perspective is what we are looking forward to. I'm sorry I took the, some time of yours for the introduction because the audience must know what the current situation is. And you please now take over without interruption. Please go ahead and tell us what is the comparative situation. Uh, Namaskar, Dr. Swami, uh, VHS team members. It's always a pleasure to be on a VHS channel. And um, today I'm going to talk about uh, the relative uh, performance, if you will, between the two largest democracies in the world, United States and India, and, and how they are coping up with this uh, COVID uh, crisis. And, and as uh, we are seeing now in India, U.S. also is on the cusp of again taking off, the numbers going up. And unlike in India, in U.S., it is actually a self-inflicted wound. And I'm <laughs> going to talk about that in a short while. But initially, let's just take a quick look at what has been happening in U.S. and then India. Um, in the United States, except for the border states and a few others, such as Michigan, the United States appears to have turned the corner in achieving herd immunity for the population. This is the key word, herd immunity, which means everybody is exposed in some form or the other, and they have developed antibodies so that whenever this uh, thing starts raising its head, the antibodies inside your system fight it and then vanquish it. This is exactly how we are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. COVID is an extreme case. Every day we are inhaling things that could cause harm to our body, but our antibodies are there fighting the good fight for us and, and you know, keeping us healthy. So now in if, if everything goes okay, there may be a glitch or two, and, and I'll come to that why US is going to have a glitch or two after I do the initial statement, but here is how the trends are as far as US is concerned. The first one is, 3 million people are being vaccinated every day. And from tomorrow, everyone can get vaccinated. Uh, about uh, three weeks ago, the, the age was lowered to 45. Uh, and, and from tomorrow, everybody can go and get vaccinated. In fact, new centers are opening up. There are lots of malls that are not operating right now. So the US government has taken over these things. It's a simple ID. You just need an ID and your current um, uh, healthcare provider, you want to provide that data because then it gets entered into the healthcare system that you are vaccinated. Plus, in future, if you're going to travel, it is just a small square card with a QR code to tell everybody that you know you have been vaccinated this day and this day. 
I have taken Moderna and tomorrow I'm going to be taking my second dose. The first one, I just it just hurt me around the hand where it had, they had injected it. And hopefully tomorrow will be just as uh, smooth as possible. And the second thing, and this is important for India, is Johnson & Johnson, um, the case of uh, you know vaccinations from Jackson, Johnson & Johnson is in review because of the 7 million inoculated, only six had adverse effects and only one died, one is still critical, four are recovering fine. So all these six people were in the age group of 18 to 48, all were women. So there is a, a, a hint here in that if you can manage the vaccine such that until the root cause is determined, uh, we don't uh, uh, vaccinate women between ages of 18 to 48 with J and J, everything is fine because a J and J like vaccine makes India's job that much easier. One shot, One. you're done. Now, the next thing is, as far as corporate is concerned, Google is planning to have everyone back in the office by the end of April, which means that Google thinks that things are under control or at least getting under control. And, and perhaps even if you are in at work, you may have to wear masks unless, um, you know, there is uh, areas where you are the only person in the room. Perhaps you don't have to do it then. So this is a, a step in the forward direction. Other big companies are still mulling over it. But Google has about 100,000 employees in various campuses. So that's a good step in the forward direction. Now, most universities in the United States are planning to resume full operation from fall semester, which is starts usually at the third or fourth week of August, or sometimes it can even go all the way up to the first week of September with the start date. And, and this semester, everybody expects it to be in full attendance. All the students who are applying have already been notified that you will be having everything that they are assigning dorms. So there is a sense that now the worst is over. As far as my state, California, is concerned, California plans to start full operations from June 15, 2021, with masks being mandatory. You need to have the masks on for perhaps the foreseeable future until there is a way that you know every every person has been vaccinated. And I think that has to be taken on a case-to-case -case basis. Um, I personally am planning on traveling to LA next month to attend the wedding of a relative of mine. It's a very small wedding. It's going to be outside, about 50 to 60 people total, both sides included. So it's it's just family members only. And I think this is the kind of state that's going to continue for the next few months until everybody starts feeling comfortable that you know the, the worst is over. Now, this is the status in United States. However, in the last couple of weeks, some things have gone wrong. And I'll touch that after I do a comparison with what is happening in India. Now, what is the reason for the surge in COVID in India? Is it bad? Now, from what appears to be a gradual road to recovery, India is now experiencing some serious speed bumps in handling COVID. The number of cases per day is hitting over 200,000, with some states such as Maharashtra, Gujarat, Delhi, Punjab, and Karnataka are seeing a steep increase in the number of people who have caught it. Personally, I have lost a few near and dear people who were healthy up until they faced COVID. This is in the second phase. This is where things are really hitting home. It is sad, but we must deal with in it is sad that, but we must deal with it in the best possible manner. So we will all come out better and healthier. One possible reason, I mean, this is just a possible reason for Maharashtra, which is where the steepness started, is the discovery of a new COVID strain called the double mutating virus. The news of such a variation, it's also called B1617, B as in boy, 1617, first appeared in February 2021 in the United Kingdom and was written up during the last week of March in BBC and other sites. So I think this is possible. it's possible that people who are visiting India and going back to UK were the first carriers of that back to UK. Now it is also uh, you know, found in some places in uh, the United States. Stanford Medical Research Center already has it. So people are starting to look at this new double mutating uh, virus. So what does it mean? Is it more dangerous? Can the virus, uh, can the vaccine stop this too? Well, the answer to the first question, no, it's not more dangerous. And to the second question about vaccine being able to stop, probably, but not definitely, because we still need to do more research to understand it. You know, vaccines take years to perfect. 
So nothing is perfect. So it has to be done more deliberately. You have to take all the data into consideration before coming up and declaring victory. And therefore, this is where things are today. And the good news about this new double mutation thing is, even though it is aggressive, uh, it spreads aggressively, it is not worse than the previous one. It is not worse. You just have to take basic precautions and as far as possible, try to understand what your body is telling you. And I'm going to deal with the symptoms in just a few minutes. Let me just summarize where things are. Now, it is possible that your COVID vaccine may have to be taken once every six months. And, and it is simply because of the fact that this virus seems to have an ability to find new forms and shapes to evolve. Therefore, even as this is happening on one side, vaccines are going to be continuously developed and, and trying to uh, counter this stuff. However, some things have been found to be very useful. So first, I would like to uh, uh, talk about what are the things that we in India as well as in the US uh, are, are going to do. Um, I have a couple of uh, observations in terms of uh, you know, uh, what India is doing about people migrating back to their villages. I think that is a bad idea in this instance, because if they happen to be going from an area where the double mutating virus was found, this time for sure, people back in the villages will also experience it. So in other words, you are spreading the problem. They should be actually staying back in the cities. I don't know when uh, you know, the government is going to wake up and smell the coffee on this part. This is very, very important. The double mutating virus is considered to be the biggest reason why you're seeing this uptick now. And, and by send, letting people to go back to their uh, villages, I think they'll be carrying this thing back. It's not going to be like the previous time. This time it might be much worse. Now, having said all that, as a human being, what are the precautions we can take to help reduce this impact greatly? First off, wear a mask while stepping out. Weigh and double weigh if there is a need to go out. See if you can have the stuff that you need delivered and, and just have it in the front of your uh, complex and go and pick it up. This is an easier way to do it, especially the youngsters, the children who think nothing is going to affect them. It's a lesson. Don't step out. You may not get affected, but may you you may carry it back with you into the house to your grandma, your loved ones, and they may suffer the consequences. It is important to think, you know, Vasudaiva Kutumbukam, meaning like the world is one small family. We don't know what we have inside of us, but we could be unwittingly hurting somebody else. So please, please, please heed this warning and stay home. As far as possible, stay from stay and work from home. There are definitely many ways to keep yourself occupied. And, and that's what I would say. And, and in order to try and keep the migration happening, I think the, the government needs to put money in the hands of everyone. And, and see, sir, I'm going to defer with you on one small thing at this point, And we can debate this after the thing. I would like to see the government place an amount of say 10,000 rupees to everybody who's in like, you know, the lower uh, income groups in Delhi and Mumbai use their Aadhaar card to make sure that it is entered, that they've already been paid. Use the Aadhaar card as a measure to find out that, yes, you have been paid. The money is in your bank. You can use that to draw down and, and, and start buying because now many stores are also accepting, uh, you know, UPI or any one of the electronic payment and have that get into place because going letting them to go back to their villages is only going to make this problem much much worse and and uh, this this is something that should have been done and and i would also say that what amount that 10000 i said is just a simple number the number should be calculated from the the data that the government has from the previous years uh, you know average income and things like that Add an extra twenty five percent. We all tend to understate our income. So this this is this is. Just I, I, I'll interrupt you. I'll interrupt you one minute. Yeah. My colleagues here know that this is exactly what I proposed in the very beginning. Put oh. money into their hands. Okay. So I don't know where you got the impression that I was uh, oh, no, against. It, such a no, not the money part. The Aadhaar part. That's what I meant. Oh, Aadhaar. Oh, the Aadhaar card. Well, then, yes, yes. <laughs> all right. that, that's you what you are that that. opposed to. It. That's all I meant, sir. I know oh, okay. that you. You mentioned that you, money should be put in people's hands. Uh, yes. So th this is this is a must-have. So this is not going to cause inflation because, like I said, 
make sure if somebody doesn't have a bank account when you go and give the money to them make sure that they have the bank account the money is not going to get transferred no cash transfer it's going to be bank to bank and then people have to learn to start using online banking even if 10% converts you'll make a huge difference because today it is it is localized in some of the bigger cities i think this is a manageable problem india certainly connects uh, you know conducts its elections in a very nice way if that is possible doing this kind of an effort is not impossible at all <laughs> this is something that the modi government should really really consider i mean you are talking about like the last ditch thing here otherwise you're going to have an uncontrolled virus it might not be worse but your system is stressed everybody when it's there see the the, the most important thing here um is uh, I, i'm going to go to the next level which is what happens when you take a vaccine see why why do we have two separations like four weeks apart or six weeks apart or even eight weeks apart what happens is the first time you take the shot then for uh, the, the, the shot itself inoculates your body against the pieces of covid um, you know signature that is injected in your body that is how the antibodies are uh, produced inside your body at the 14th day you might experience some symptoms and this could be somewhat extreme for some people this after the first shot okay and and you have to be careful to because what happens on the 14th day is at that point the vaccines effort to fight the fight on your behalf wears away completely and it is up to the antibodies inside your system to take up the fight and fight the coronavirus so the same thing happens when you take the second shot also at the 14th day is when you may have some adverse reactions so be prepared for that monitor yourself but if you are staying if you stay at home if you don't uh, deal with too many people around you you should be doing fine this is the most important takeaway from why these vaccines have this after effect of the 14th day i hope that uh, you know helps clarify a few things now what happens so assuming that you take the vaccine worst case that and you you become covid positive after that what 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 it means is that the antibodies in your body are not able to quite fight off the vaccine uh, fight off the covid so what happens is you need some external help external help could be in form of ayurvedic medication it if it in extreme cases then you may have to go to icu you may have to be pumped in things like remdesivir or or some other things like zinc uh, vitamin a and vitamin d it depends on a case to case basis and and based on that your recovery will be you know gradual usually it's like 3 or 4 days today at least in the united states there is so much data that they can basically try and manage your human body in many ways for example um if covid is in your lungs and does not get into your vital parts such as the heart and the kidney then using some effective medical medical procedures you can contain it right there manage it get rid of it from the uh, lungs and after that your body comes back to recovery it is this is the key key effect that needs to be kept in mind as to what happens when you turn covid positive after taking a vaccine now the symptoms don't change a whole lot it is just that you might be throwing up sometimes you might have fever and and uh, you might have dry cough the dry cough is not a, uh, the only sign so there are a few things so the the key is on the 14th 15th day watch out for your signs if you are suddenly developing feverish symptoms be careful watch monitor drink fluids and and take rest don't do anything that you know uh, you have to go out and do something be uh, careful about that so this is where things stand today and um, i i just want to if, if you have any, no no questions at this point i'd like to go back to what is going to happen in the us as i see it in the next 3 yeah. months yeah i i have a question here yeah please tell us in what way the us has done differently from us sir uh, one thing that the united states did was that uh, you know there's a saying charity begins at home so united states that first let us use the vaccines for ourselves let's make sure that we understand what the vaccinations uh, are doing so they have been uh, first thing even before that under trump there was an aggressive uh, uh, pro process to try and get pharma companies to produce these vaccines for example uh, pfizer uh, pfizer and a few other companies i think moderna too were given 2 billion dollars by the yeah. government and said you go and produce this uh, vaccine project think of it as a down payment for which you have to pay back 
to us in form of so many vaccines, so many million vaccines. But the point was that they didn't have to go and look at new finances to do the vaccine development. They got the money from the government. The government funded them right under the front. We trust you. Go ahead and do this. And, and slowly but steadily, they have got that per person uh, you know, vaccine co coverage now to 3 million per day. And they expect that by, I think, mid-June or so, they'll be done in, uh, you know, vaccinating everybody, everybody, 100%. The population in the United States is 330 million. And, and with 3 million going every day, it's 100 days. And already we are in the sixth or seventh week of vaccinations being provided. It's very, very straightforward process. It's about an hour's time. You go in, you, you identify yourself. That is if you're going for the first time. Second time, you have the card, you wave in immediately. Then you get the, the shot. You have to wait for 15, 20 minutes to see if there's any adverse reactions because there's a waiting area, like a recovery area, where you wait and the doctors are around looking at you to make sure that you're not suffering some adverse reactions. After that, you're free to go home. So the whole process should not take more than an hour. Now, with the aggressive uh, you know, uh, vaccination process that the US has undertaken, it is expected that by June, mid-June, we'll be all done. And already now, Pfizer is announcing that within six months, there will be one more vaccine shot. There may be, I think they're now beginning to say, will be one more vaccine shot. And again, remember that this is because of the fact that this vaccine is a new vaccine, plus this uh, virus is mutating. And, and I think now the whole uh, research community is veering around to saying that it has something like an experiment gone wrong. It has originated from Chinese. It's like you have to pry these words out of some of these uh, doctors' mouths that it, this is what has happened, even though the person on the street could have easily told you that, look, there is something unusual about this. Viruses have a set time after which they start losing their effectiveness. And it's this mutation into new ways who knows how it is going? The most other interesting thing here is China itself, its own vaccine is struggling. Their effectiveness has yeah. been found to be between 1-5% to 5-5% maximum. And, and um, so many countries are not taking China's vaccine. In fact, there may be a day when China might say, oh, well, I think we need vaccines too from India. And, and here is where I think... <laughs> they'll, come, here is where, they'll, come and cap, they'll come and capture it here. <laughs> So here, here is where I think perhaps India could have rethought the strategy. Um, uh, see, India tried to use vaccine as a diplomatic instrument to come right, to China. Right. In a way, it was good, sir. The reason why it, I say it is good is the effectiveness of the vaccine is only six months. And, and, and therefore, perhaps India thought, okay, if I don't do this thing, these things are going to go waste anyway. So let me try to bring, get some goodwill. I mean, India said 100,000 here, 100,000 there, you know, something like that. I don't know the total numbers. The government can be transparent, come out and say so many vaccines produced, so many went out to different countries on a vaccine diplomacy. There's nothing wrong in this. Yes, we learned our lessons. We are moving forward. However, the takeaway for India is... Will they do this two most important things? One is J and J vaccine. If you are going to take AstraZeneca and take the chances with that, you should definitely consider taking uh, J and J also. There is no harm in terms of you know trying to keep that data uh, you know um, demographic out of the vaccine. Don't give it to those women. Although the women perhaps are the ones who need the single shot vaccine. They are they are controlling four different balls at the air in the air all the time. So, uh, but be that as it may, until this determination is there. In fact, uh, Florida and Donald Trump have pushed back very hard on the JNJ data and saying that how can you make this decision if one in one million is getting affected? How can that be a reason for a pause? So anyway, so I think that determination will come in the next few days. India should consider doing that and and do rapid vaccination as quickly as possible. The second thing, put money in people's hands, not just the lower middle class, everybody's hands. Let them not worry about how they are going to make their money tomorrow. Give them peace of mind. You are seeing how U.S. has come out of it. In U.S. so far has pumped six trillion dollars into the economy with another two to four trillion dollars coming in. U.S. Is, uh, GDP is 23 trillion. They are saying half of the GDP's output we are going to put in. And this is it is tangible, sir. 
I get $1,400 checks. I've got two already. And this doesn't have <laughs> anything to do with the salaries that people are making. The third one is a little bit more discriminating in that it is going to see how much you make. And then basically, uh, based on your uh, your in income, they are going to, uh, you know, some, some uh, stratification might take place. But the important thing is the economic engine is back up and running. And I think yep. India is not... Uh, as Correct. developed as US is in like the, you turn the switch on that you're going to get a V recovery. You you can think of any alphabet. I think V is not the one that comes to my mind. And mm -hmm. and to, to do that, I don't understand why out of the 198 countries in the world, you, uh, India is the one country that has not printed currency. Unless they're doing Correct. it and not telling us. <laughs> Maybe we're getting counterfeit from Pakistan. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, see, but then there are some good things that, uh, you know, the Modi government has done. Jandan Yojana is a good one to try and get people to, you know, open bank accounts so that the money can, direct benefit transfers can happen. So use the same vehicle and, and try to put money in people's hands. And as far as possible, let the companies such as, uh, you know, e-commerce companies to deliver food and other, uh, you know, important items at your doorstep. This is more important than you you can imagine because the spreading thing you can't control it and it is better to try and have a hub and spoke kind of uh, arrangement where the delivery person is the one who has to take extra precaution but as far as you know the food is concerned it comes to your doorstep you just open the door get it in uh, groceries whatever uh, it is this thing needs to be there there is this is a new normal for the next five ten years i think maybe in my lifetime we are all going to have some sort of a precaution we will have to wear masks when we are going out and, and we have to be more careful about environment. And one important takeaway is it has now been found that being vegetarian, eating vegetarian food helps fight COVID. Mm. And, and yeah. this is, again, it's not a, a pan world uh, uh, research. It is, I mean, again, India is the best place to give data for you. Most other countries, they are, we are part-time vegetarians. I mean, not me, I'm a full vegetarian, but I'm just saying that not everybody um, eats a meat-free diet every day. So this is this is another important takeaway. If you can stay vegetarian, it has more benefits than you can imagine. Start your own vegetable patch garden. It might not give you every day of the week food, but it, the, that satisfaction that comes. You got time on your hands. I mean, you, you, you can follow a meeting and water your plant. So I'm, I'm just giving some simple ideas, sir. This is this is where I see things, and there's one problem that US has now started facing, which is essentially it was the poor promise that uh, the Democrats had done. They said that we are going to allow all children who have been separated from their parents to be reunited. These are migrant children. Now the problem with that was instead of regulating access, the the floodgates got opened for a few days, and in February, 110,000 people just walked in. They just walked in through the uh, the country's borders and they were housed in tents and, and it's become a mess in, in March. It was a much bigger number. In April, it is continuing. Only now the administration is waking up to the fact that A, people who are coming in may not be uh, COVID negative. They were not being tested. So they are beginning to have their own centers. And worse, because the uh, place to store them got overwhelming at the border, they started busing them to guess what? Entire country. And, and, and they are being housed in the cities where there is the maximum amount of population. So this, yeah. these things, I think uh, it, it's, it's going to really come back to bite uh, the Biden government. And um, now everybody is waking up. And again, they are building walls. Because what was also happening was you give any rule, people are going to game it. What people are doing is instead of the whole family trying to migrate to U.S., they were trying to help their children jump the fence. They are literally jumping the fence in places where it's complete desert on the United States side. There is no water, very uh, poisonous snakes and scorpions uh, there. But boys and girls are jumping across and trying to hope for the best. So these kinds of things are happening. And, and this is a totally self-inflicted wound on part of the Biden government. They could have said, yes, we will unite these families, but in an orderly manner. And, and made sure that first the COVID check was positive, uh, was tested and make like a step-by-step -step process. Instead, they went with both feet. It was almost as if, and this is my opinion, 
that uh, Mr. Biden had a checklist. Appease this congressman, tick, do this. Appease this congresswoman, tick, do this. I mean, we are doing the, the six trillion, uh, eight trillion package is being, it has so many, you know, uh, earmarks and pork things that, you know, it's unbelievable. Every country in the US, uh, in the world is getting money from the US for essentially what is a problem that is within the United States. So we are at the forefront of pointing some of these things. We have a weekday program that airs at 5.30 p.m. IST on Monday through Friday. And we take about 15, 20 minutes to tell you what is happening in the world COVID situation. So you understand because the this is going to also determine when international flights are going to resume again. And I have no clue when that happens. And uh, at this point, all we can say is everybody needs to stay in bubbles, try to manage it that way. And, uh, yeah, and, and of course, always pray to Lord Ganesha behind me right there. And uh, <laughs> he is the remover of all obstacles. And, and, the, other, uh, and the other side is uh, Saraswati Chakra. No, it is Sri Chakra, sir. So, yeah, so, so Sri Chakra is the same so, thing. Yeah. yeah, so here's the scientific thing. If I move a little bit, you can see the, the Ganesha also has an ohm embedded in it. <laughs> so, um, oh, for those of you who may not know this, uh, Om is the sound of the sun's energy that reaches the earth. Yes, Except correct. that the energy has to be brought down to audible range. So you have to take out the if you take out the bass, then you can hear it. It's, that's the sound of Om. And our uh, rishis, I mean, I mean, if you have heard Dr. Swami's lectures, you know what this is. Our rishis mm -hmm. heard it, and they said that is why the sound Om started coming. Now, you take the really uh, the correct way of saying Om from the Nabi, from within your stomach, when you come out and say Om, if you put that sound through what is called as the tonoscope, tonoscope is something that um, you know analyzes the frequencies. And if you do that, then the shape that emerges is that of the Sri Chakra to my left. So the Om and the Sri Chakra are related. These are energy sources. And, and this kind of tells us that the Sanatana Dharma, Hindu Hinduism, is the most scientific religion because it is based on the principle that Yat Pinde Tat Brahmande. That is, what I am is what the universe also is, and that's why you know we do all these things. We also count one zero eight. You probably know why the one zero eight number is important. Anyway, so these things are all important. We, we need to turn inwards to become more spiritual because spirituality gives you the inner strength to deal with any challenge that might come your way. So some of the wage earners uh, are, uh, are no more with us and, and suddenly the family which has nobody else making money is beset with incredible difficulties. And this could be happening to any strata of society. So this Modi government mindset that only the, the people who matter, which are the lower class people, should be given money, that's nonsense, bogus. Everybody needs to get money because you have taken away the fundamental right to work. Yeah, correct. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little emotional because this is important. And I think somehow I don't see that messaging come from the government. Yeah. Well, you see, uh, by the way, somebody, uh, one of the uh, audience has sent you uh, think that the uh, OM uh, is uh, 432 hertz. Oh, just for your I see. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you see what an intelligent audience we have. Uh, <laughs> See, the issue is this, um, uh, which you have skirted. Uh, I mean, uh, it's not a fundamental issue, but you have still skirted it. And that is this, that originally we decided only to uh, sanction one uh, vaccine. And that was the uh, Oxford uh, AZ, which uh, was given a new name, uh, Covishield. Covishield is not, is only, uh, you know, uh, it's a, it is a what is they call as the um, contract given by foreigners to produce it in India. So it's not a in that sense a hundred percent. This is not an Indian product. It's a, it may have an Indian name and all that, but it is uh, essentially what the Oxford uh, AZ uh, research produced, and that is all over the world uh, now being on some or the or the other being questioned. So what has happened is all these exports you say would have been uh, time barred if we had not exported it. They are all being sent back. That is at least two countries I know have formally said and give us back our money, South Africa and uh, Brazil. 
So, uh, where our strategy should have been is here is an Indian company that is the uh, Bharat uh, Biotech. Uh, we will give it first preference, even it means delaying by one one year because they had uh, the, the 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 third phase. They took a very large sample and it took a little time, uh, an extra month. So we could have waited an extra month, and it has not a single, uh, uh, you know, uh, where a connection can be found between it taking that drug and then suffering some, uh, you know, uh, Side physical. Effects. Yeah, yeah, health effects, you see. So, uh, not a single. And now, of course, the government is now uh, suddenly woken up and said, no, no, we are uh, asking the uh, uh, the Bharat uh, Biotech to now produce 7 million, 10 million, you know, like that. Uh, so, I, I do think now we have reached a stage where I agree with you, we need to import. Uh, because uh, the speed at which things are happening, uh, I don't think we can produce that fast and also have it reached. So, um, uh, I had in fact said that if you can continue to use um, the, the Oxford AZ with the risk uh, associated with what uh, effects it will have, then there is no harm in taking uh, also Johnson & Johnson even though there is some question that has been raised uh, as you said in a small, very, 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 very small sample but still has been raised. You can take that risk and uh, perhaps not give it to women or something like that. So, I, I, uh, uh, what I get after hearing you is that you think that the Americans went about it systematically. Americans didn't export anything by the way, uh, to my knowledge. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're uh, right. Uh, and, uh, and this is a country which, you know, can mass produce in no time. They got a technology, everything, but they did not. They said first us. I think we should have taken the same stand. And uh, uh, and that would have meant uh, today we would have got a head start, but we have not. Now we are now in a situation where, you know, 3 million, 4 million like that, when we need to be at the 300 million level. So, um, the, we, we need to learn a lesson that really Atman Nirbhar literally means that you first make do with what you uh, can produce. And only when you find the gap, is un, 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 uh, you know, un, uh, is impossible to fill, that you would start thinking of getting from abroad. That uh, is what I would put in my two bits worth. You are an expert, but um, I would say that this is what I would, uh, and I, I don't know whether you agree with that or not. No, I agree with you completely, sir. Now, see, the other challenge that we, uh, India is going to face is every country is having a problem in its uh, on, it, on their own hands. So, to, today, there are four new variants that are, you know, you know, big numbers. Uh, yeah. United Kingdom, South Africa, Brazil, and now India. So you have four variants. The original one plus the four. These are the big one. There are, I mean, if you talk to experts, they'll say like there are 35, 40 variants and so on. So it's scary if you think about it. There's so many different versions. Which one is going to hit me? Will my vaccine, you know, do the needful? You can't stop, you know, you can't keep on worrying about all these things. <laughs> But the most interesting uh, thing is India knows how to solve this thing. India has Ayurveda yeah. and Ayurveda, yeah. these are all herbs. These are all grown in India. Let us turn and you know, look back and see what the Ayurveda experts are saying. There are like some things like Ashwagandha and, and I'm just one name that came to my mind. There are three or four things that they are saying. It's all Kashayas. They call them Kashaya. It's yeah, kashaya. Bitter. It is hard to swallow. but Always good medicine is always bitter. We should take that, <laughs> keep that in mind. These are all excellent uh, prophylactics. They are, uh, you know, they can help fight the antibodies. And simple thing, eat the leafy vegetables that has vitamin A and do some time in the sun. Surya Namaskar, if you can. Otherwise, at least get some sunlight, half an hour to on the body. Even inside uh, flats, if you, there's a way you can regulate it and walk around and let the sun fall on your body, that vitamin A and vitamin D, those are important to try and build yeah. the antibodies. The simple things that can be done, I definitely, definitely would look at Ayurveda as an option. And, and ICMR could have taken some of those things and said, okay, the, the health, because it's just formulation, sir. I mean, you can take the kashaya, break it down to its essential ingredient and say, okay, this is the same to same comparison. This is what Remdesivir has. This is what this particular kashaya has. So, okay, it has a few more things. So, this is kind of thing that should have been done one year now. 
and uh, so i think india needs to think about ayurveda as an effective vaccine it's important yeah sure and even tulsi is very very effective by the yes, way yes 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 uh one last question before my colleagues take over uh you know the one big problem the government is going to face is that we have forced our two indian producers whether one is a uh, outsourced uh, producer uh, and the other being a swadeshi producer we have told them to uh, give it a very low price now we are going to get uh, say johnson johnson and say uh, uh, pfizer and so on they are uh, going to uh, you know by uh, for instance in pakistan they are selling a uh, pfizer is selling at i think uh, 6000 rupees which is equivalent to our 3000 rupees here we are selling uh, for you know 150 100 200 uh, you know by uh, the subsidized rate so we're going to have a real uh, real problem so the our future really lies in sort of a mix of swadeshi products ayurveda uh, maybe homeopathic too and uh, then of course uh, yoga and then of course uh, 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 covaxin the, these are uh, the ways i think we should go, move forward and have more confidence in our own uh, ancient uh, wisdom in this matter that's my conclusion and now ramesh has uh, put his hand up and so he he, he takes over okay thank you dr swami thank you shri it was a excellent uh, i mean information yeah, i just true. i have three slides that i want to show okay so i'm just taking your permission to do that yeah um, please go ahead okay so i just want to quickly compare the vaccination levels of uh, you know uh, uh, us and uh, india generally i just want to quickly give you so the us we have if you look at the 85 plus uh, 80 plus 65 plus population 80% are inoculated already so we are roughly seeing about 50% of the population who have at least who have been uh, in the age above 18 have been already vaccinated so uh, we are at a good that's just at least one dose and even if you look at full dose it's about 65% of the most vulnerable part if you look at the vulnerable population india is just 8% i don't have the break up because india doesn't give break up age wise and all those things unfortunately so india has just reached about 8% of the of the vaccination The fascinating part is India has exported close to 67 million doses. <laughs> out of which Correct. 40% was charity. <laughs> Correct. I mean it I am I, I'm I'm at a loss as to why how is that a good strategy? So I don't know. I haven't I don't have no, an answer. No, no, Nobel Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> um so I it's fascinating that you know like as Sri said America say I mean the as normal attitude was always you know me myself first and before getting anybody else it was very clear from get go that when when the us government paid pfizer moderna money up front and saying i'm blocking every dose that you make for so many they give them billions of dollars and saying you're not do, do, exporting even one vial outside until certain population of mine so why what is it why is it so difficult for india to not follow a strategy inoculate the people locally <laughs> and uh, then move on um shri coming to the ayurvedic thing we actually uh, uh, a week ago we discussed exactly that uh, 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 dr ajay sanke you know him uh, they have created a, an ayurvedic uh, con- uh, you know uh, medicine or slash more of a preventive thing called ayur core 3 um, i think yeah so jagdish ji is showing that so we we, we did that mm-hmm. part in this is the one yeah so so we did that too so i, I think as you said there is a lot of local knowledge as well so i'm moving on to the next one sorry to say this this is new jersey state um so uh, strictly this vaccination has helped new jersey a lot and we are we are pop, we are bumping to a level that we'll be inoculated by within a full month if you look at asian it says 9% a little bit small i'll try to expand it a little see if i can just show you so it says the asian pop asian 9% the population of asians in, in new jersey is 10% so we are like 99% asians are already uh, you know vaccinated in, in the state of new jersey so essentially a lot of the northeastern states which were really punished have taken up the queue and are rapidly ramping up uh, getting people vaccinated of course there are anti vaxxers they're jumping saying that i don't want vaccine the same case going on in india i think it's it's a very bad pr uh, i mean it's management in india that they are not doing a good job of telling people saying that hey 
any vaccination, irrespective of whatever it is, you can just even get a paracetamol, you can just cross in or dolo, and you can still fall sick. I mean, there is obviously these are medications. So you have, there will be a small population, very, very small population that might get adverse effect, but that's not the case. So you should have to get vaccinated. They are putting, they're pushing for polio vaccine. Why can't they make uh, uh, this vaccine mandated and saying that, okay, you won't get ration if you don't get vaccinated. Simple as that. That's it. Everybody is going to get that done. You know, like well, you touch their thing or like what we'll follow the Tamil Nadu formula. If you get vaccinated, we'll give you 500 rupees. People will come and get it vaccinated. <laughs> I mean, what else can you do? I mean, you have to, the healthcare, the crisis that you're going to face by not getting vaccinated is much higher compared to what, I mean, they just don't understand the risk associated with it. So that's another one. Um, this is, I'm sorry, Dr. Swami, it's a little bit uh, small. This is another fascinating uh, thing that I saw today. Yes. Uh, let me expand it a little bit. So the, the health ministry suddenly decided to withdraw uh, health insurance from uh, for, uh, for workers fighting COVID. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, seriously, these guys are putting their life online and you're saying, okay, no more. You can put their life online at your own risk. <laughs> I mean, some of these decisions are fascinating and just say, you know, uh, only a typical babu in India can come up with some kind of numbers like that, the key kind of decisions like these. Uh, yeah, I mean, because, they, because they, for all said and done, the uh, health budget has uh, uh, has been actually slashed in mm -hmm. real terms. And they claimed it had gone 137% in, in the budget speech of the, of the finance minister and later on it turned that uh, for three, four other ministries, budget has been merged with the health and then passed off as health budget. Yeah. And the last thing, says, <laughs> which is the card that they give us, Dr. Swami, when we get vaccinated. I've obviously hidden some data, but this is what we get when we get... Uh, when, uh, this is US. US, yeah. So, so, I mean, people are mocking that we are a paper driven and all, but it's okay. But at least, you know, we are getting pushed to do this. And so it's a kind of, it's a kind of things. Like as Sri said, you know, the only job India has to do is now get people vaccinated. I mean, push, pull, whatever you do, I don't care what the strategy is. You have to get them vaccinated. Give them a carrot or a stick. Just use any means to get make sure that the people get vaccinated. Just give them incentives, not incentives, push. The biggest drawback, Dr. Swami, raw material for making this vaccine. On one side, we made a stupid mistake of exporting 67 million doses. And now we are saying, oh, we cannot manufacture any because we don't have the raw material. And guess who is the largest supplier? China. China. <laughs> and you're caught in the loop. And now you're going begging America to say, oh, give me raw material. Why would, I mean, seriously, America says, until we are done, we're not going to give it. Yeah. Very simple. Right. Right. Pathetic. I, mean, I just want to put these facts on saying in terms of how the strategy India needs to cope in the immediate few. And again, the vaccine shortages are so uh, abnormal compared to the north and south of India. Not there's a severe shortage. So, especially in Chennai, um, I've asked about everybody. They don't see, see any shortages. The biggest challenge in the north is this misinformation, stupid campaign that this vaccine is causing deaths and all this nonsense. So, the when they open up a vial, instead of administering all the 10 doses, they throw away after the five or six doses. So doses are wasted like crazy. And because once they, they don't have the cooling thing, they only keep the bottle for so long. And if three or four bottles are not being used, they're being thrown away. I mean, this whole thing has to be taken on a war footing instead we're just running around doing campaigns, which is just amazing to me. And you say you shut down you, Kumbh Mela, you want to shut down this and the, uh, I mean, what is the strategy of after nine o'clock, don't go out, COVID will spread. You mean COVID is nocturnal? <laughs> I, mean, I don't get this. Anyway, I mean, it, it's just convoluted as a more of a distraction. Uh, even there needs to be a very clear strategy spying India saying that, okay, we will get vaccinated by this time. And that is exactly what Sri told from a U.S. perspective. They said by middle of May or end June, 100% of the population will be vaccinated, period. You're taking it or not is your choice, but we will hit that herd immunity number of 60%. Yep. Arvind, okay. you have your comments before I want to uh, have some yeah, uh, Thank you. Uh, I have many questions. Shri, I want to ask you a question in Hindi. You have said that the US has pumped a $6 trillion pump for this COVID-19. Can you tell us that in our experience, in the United States, the PMK Cares Fund was used in the United States. And in my opinion, the number of 15,000 crore rupees can be increased. Has Donald Trump done this after that? 
नए राष्ट्रपति ने कोई ऐसा फंड क्रिएट किया कि छह ट्रिलियन फंड उन्होंने कहां से दिए क्या जनता ने उसमें भागीदारी की और फंड किया तो फंड कहां गया ये सवाल भारत में तो हम पूछ सकते हैं क्योंकि हमें पता है भारत में फंड इकट्ठा हुआ है पहली बात दूसरी बात यह कि रमेश स्वामी ने जिक्र किया यूएस पॉलिसी का कि जो रॉ मटेरियल है उसको वो दे नहीं दे रहे अदार पूना वाला जो सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट के फाउंडर हैं उन्होंने लेटर लिखा है जो बाइडेन को कि ये रॉ मटेरियल हमें रिलीज कर दिया जाए और भारत सरकार ये अपील नहीं कर रही वो भारत सरकार से अपील नहीं कर रहे भारत सरकार अमेरिका से अपील नहीं कर रही लेकिन डायरेक्ट वो अमेरिका से अपील कर रहे हैं राष्ट्रपति को ट्वीट कर रहे हैं फोटस के नाम से कि वो मटेरियल तो ये जो प्रश्न है रॉ मटेरियल के बारे में या फंडिंग के बारे में मैं एक सवाल पूछना चाहता था जो आपने पहले ही जिक्र कर दिया आयुर्वेद का जो चौथा सवाल मेरा था वो आखिरी है कि भारत में और अमेरिका में जो प्रोफाइल है डेमोग्राफिक प्रोफाइल कम से कम एज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन या जेंडर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन जो पेशेंट्स का है वो अलग अलग है जो रिसर्च पेपर मैंने अभी तक पढ़े हैं जो पब्लिश रिसर्च पेपर है और ज्यादातर सितंबर से दिसंबर तक का डेटा उसमें है वो कहता है कि भारत में जो सबसे ज्यादा प्रभावित आयु वर्ग है वो है सत्तर वर्ष से अस्सी वर्ष का और दूसरे नंबर पे आता है तीस वर्ष से चालीस वर्ष का जबकि अमेरिका में नॉर्थ अमेरिका में खासतौर से जो रिसर्च पेपर थे वो बताते हैं कि सबसे ज्यादा प्रभावित वर्ग है वो चालीस से पचास साल के लोग अब जो दूसरा वेब आया है उसमें सिक्सटी दिल्ली के आंकड़े बताते हैं क्योंकि रोज दिल्ली के मुख्यमंत्री टीवी पे बोल रहे हैं कि 65 परसेंट लोग 40 साल से कम उम्र के हैं तो यानी कि देर इज ए डिफरेंस इन दी अटैक ऑन ए पर्टिकुलर एज ग्रुप बाई टू डिफरेंट वेव फर्स्ट वेव वॉज डिफरेंट सेकेंड वेव इज अफेक्टिंग यंगर पीपुल इज इट ट्रू इन यू एस ऑल्सो नहीं तो पहले मैं आपका पहला प्रश्न का उत्तर देता हूं मैं यहाँ पर कोई राष्ट्रपति ने अपने खुद के नाम पर फंड नहीं बनाए हैं जो भी पैसा जो होता है तो वो ट्रेजरी और फेडरल रिजर्व इन दोनों के बीच में आपस में होता है तो एक बार निर्णय लिया जाता है कि इतना पैसा हम लोगों के हाथ में पहुंचा देंगे तो वो ऑटोमेटिक हमारे अकाउंट के जरिए आ जाता है क्योंकि आपको करीब करीब मेरे ख्याल में करीब करीब नब्बे लोग इनकम टैक्स के फॉर्म्स फाइल फाइल करते हैं और वो भी इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली तो सरकार को पता है कि हमारा बैंक अकाउंट नंबर कौन सा है तो उनको सिर्फ एक काम करना पड़ता है कि वो ट्रांसफर ऑटोमेटिकली बैंक अकाउंट में आ जाता है कभी कभी क्या करते हैं कि आपको इजी होने के लिए एक डेबिट कार्ड देते हैं जिसमें वो प्री प्रोग्राम अमाउंट होता है यानी कि समझिए चौदह चौदह डॉलर चौदह डॉलर का एक डेबिट कार्ड दिया जाता है आपके नाम पर वो मेल में आता है तो उसको आप यूज करते जा सकते हैं जहां पर भी आप बाहर जाते हैं तो इस तरह से डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हो रहा है आपका जो दूसरा प्रश्न था वो था कि जो आधार पूना वाला जी जो लिख रहे हैं प्रेसिडेंट को तो इसमें एक छोटी सी बात वो भी कह रहे हैं कि वो हमने ये ऑर्डर आपको पहले ही दे चुके हैं आप सिर्फ उसको शिफ्ट नहीं कर रहे हैं क्यों नहीं कर रहे हैं ऐसा कुछ प्रश्न पूछा गया है तो इसका मैं आई मीन ये एक कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल ऑब्लिगेशन है तो आधार पूना वाला साहब को भारत के सरकार के साथ संपर्क करना पड़ेगा और पूछना पड़ेगा कि भारत सरकार अमेरिका सरकार से यह पूछना पड़ेगा कि आप कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वायलेशन कैसे कर सकते हैं यह मेरा मान, माना है तीसरा जो आपने कहा कि आयुर्वेद के जो सॉल्यूशंस हैं इसको हम पूरी तरह से हम अपने वी हैव टू अपना अपना ना है ये अपना है इसको क्या कहते हैं ना क्या पांचों उंगली घी में और सर कड़ाई में इस तरह से एक अप्रोच लेकर आप आयुर्वेद को अपनाना है घर घर में आयुर्वेद को यूज करना है ये 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 काफी आपको लाभकारक हो सकती है तुलसी तो हर घर में रहती है भाई तुलसी तेरे आंगन की तो ये ये आंगन में तुलसी का रहना बहुत ही कॉमन है शायद सिटीज में नहीं होगा फिर भी ये एक अच्छी चीज है और आपने कहा कि ये जो फोर्थ सेकंड वेव जो हो रहा है हाँ आप जो कह रहे हैं वो बिल्कुल ठीक है क्योंकि जो इंडिया में हो रहा है वो एक डबल म्यूटेंट के वजह से हो रहा है और जो यूएस में हो रहा है वो थोड़ा बहुत ये यूके का या ब्राजील का या साउथ अफ्रीका का इस तरह से छोटे छोटे मोटे वेरिएशन हैं लेकिन यहाँ पर आपको अगर टाइमली अगर आप पेशेंट को एडमिट करेंगे अस्पताल में तो रिकवरी की संभावना बहुत ही ज्यादा है और एक और चीज मैं भूल गया जो मैं अभी आपको आपके सामने रखना चाहता हूं 
जे एन जे का ये मानना है इफेक्टिवनेस के हिसाब से हिसाब से उसकी इफेक्टिवनेस करीब करीब 60 प्रतिशत है लेकिन वो कह रहे हैं कि 100 प्रतिशत हम दे सकते हैं कि हमारा जो वैक्सीन लेगा वो उसकी मौत नहीं होगी या मरण नहीं होगी तो ये एक वो लोग कह रहे हैं कि इसकी इफेक्टिवनेस इतनी है कि आप वो डेंजरस स्टेज तक नहीं जाएगा इसके ये लेने के बाद तो ये एक एक और चीज है जो ये ये जो दूसरी गारंटी नंबर जो है बाकी वैक्सीन प्रोवाइडर्स ये नहीं दे रहे हैं सिर्फ जे एन जे के कह रहे थे क्योंकि उनका जब वो पहले इंट्रोड्यूस किए थे तो उनको पूछा गया कि आप सिंगल शॉट में कैसे कर सक रहे हैं हम लोग सब दो दो शॉट पूछ रहे हैं तो उन्होंने कहा कि हमने दूसरा मेथड अपनाया वैक्सीन के लिए तो इसीलिए उनका मॉडलिंग के अनुसार वो कह रहे थे कि इससे आपको शायद थोड़ा कम इफेक्टिवनेस होगा लेकिन आपको इसकी जो सिविलिटी जो होती है वो शायद कम है तो इन सब चीजों को डॉक्टर्स और रिसर्चर्स को लेकर दे हैव टू एनालाइज दिस एंड फाइंड आउट कि क्या ये जे एन जे वैक्सीन को अपनाना अच्छा है या नहीं और एक और चीज है इनफैक्ट जो आप भारत में बाकी है रॉ मेटीरियल्स वो कौन से वैक्सीन के लिए ईजी रहेगा इसका भी एक दे हैव टू फिगर आउट आई थिंक इट्स ऑल है क्यों बट एक ही चीज ये है कि हम ये जो डबल म्यूटेशन वायरस जो नया जो वेव शुरू हुआ है ये थोड़ा सा एक स्पैनर इन द वर्क्स जैसा बन गया है तो उसको अब सामना करना ही पड़ेगा सर्टनली हुम इज नॉट हेल्पिंग या आई वन सप्लीमेंट्री टू अरविंद चतुर्वेदी बिकॉज देर बीन सम क्वेश्चन विच आर बीन स्क्रोलिंग You see, there is one aspect which we are we are only now dealing with the availability of the vaccine, but there is also question of availability of bed, hospital beds, ICUs, so on. People are uh, now in the pavements waiting for it to be uh, you know hospitals to say okay one bed is now become free. You know that kind of situation is arisen. I know this from uh, you know uh, personal accounts given to me uh, recently. so uh, i remember in the beginning in the united states you took over uh, you know warehouses this thing and converted them to hospitals the government did it so i think that the one thing our government needs to do here is start taking over big areas and then put in beds if necessary fly them in from wherever in the world if you don't can't make them fast enough and create ad hoc hospitals Where at least people can uh, be there, and there will be a lot of paramedical people also can be brought in. Otherwise, uh, how do you, you know? There's a shortage of everything in terms of infrastructure. It's not only a question of lack of uh, um, uh, medicine, but this other aspect has not been given the kind of attention it should be given. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more, sir. And this is uh, this is unfortunate because you are having some. sectors of the industry overproduce and some sectors are deliberately you know un, uh, unemployed i mean not meaning like they are not allowed to work and and so this kind of disparity also comes into play i i think india has a mindset we are a crisis driven society we do rise to the occasion whenever a crisis hits us and i hope that what you said now about creating more beds easy to use i mean there is i think uh, one third of the multi floored uh, flats in mumbai yeah. and bengaluru they are all unoccupied these are all plastic yeah, yeah, yeah. money even in even in delhi yes so you know uh, ram ka naam lekar uh, we have to use those things purpose them to proper way i think it is possible yeah sure i, I have an observation i have an observation to make <clears throat> while we are all definitely there is shortage of beds there is shop, uh, shortage of the medicine which is very uh, life saving medicines and uh, i would just talk of my experiences in mumbai and from talks of people of vhs members in other parts of india that absolutely there is no way we can find beds for needy covid patients that's a very frightening situation which was not there last year so i think the government on a war footing needs to pay attention to it whichever government some people blame the central government some people blame the state government or even the city corporation but the fact remains irrespective of parties this issue needs to be tackled at top level coming back to the vaccination except last one week of shortage that was there i feel the vaccination drive in india 
has gone on excellently well. In fact, I would differ with Sri Ayer and Ramesh Swami that perhaps our system of vaccination is better than what it is in the US. And I tell you why it is so. Number one, the centers are far more compared to the way it is in US. You have to wait for hours. In India, it is very short period of waiting, very systematically organized via your phones and apps. And instantly, virtually at the end of your vaccination, within three hours, you get your first certificate. And when you get your second also, you get a certificate. Unlike in the West or you, uh, USA, you are getting on a small sheet of paper. So definitely on the vaccination front, maybe we have not reached all the population yet, but the vaccination is much better. There is definitely shortage of co-vaccine and there is no choice for the people to select COVID shield over, uh, I mean, sorry, co-vaccine over COVID shield or vice versa. But the vaccination setup is quite good, except we require on a, I would say, uh, in a very big way, the beds, because in a city like Bombay, the war room is also not able to provide beds or the medicines and people are running helter skelter. This is my observation when we are comparing US and India. You're, 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 uh, you're behind your background, you're, there's a hotel. They should take over that hotel and make it into a hospital. Yeah, that's quite uh, good. It is a good suggestion. We should. Because most of these places, in fact, uh, there are uh, private sector has come forward, like Swami Narayan, uh, Saunsta has come, BAPS has yeah. come and converted an entire building into a COVID center. In fact, yes. the uh, what was there in the last year is missing greatly this year. The government has not risen to the occasion in tackling the thing this year. Another good news which I see and perhaps Dr. Swami can tell us, there are two parts of it. One is Bharat Biotech is developing a nasal vaccine and they have yeah. got permission to do the trial, what is known as trial one or first basis trial. And that will be a very interesting uh, invention yeah. if they come with this nasal vaccine yeah. in India and, and it was Atma Nirbhar nasal vaccine, which it, it, it is successfully out. <laughs> Number two, Dr. Swami, some of the viewers would like to you to tell us, and if Ramesh can quickly put on that letter about the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research oh. <laughs> with China, because people think that uh, this Chinese vaccine, uh, or not no vaccine, the Chinese virus was yes. nothing to do with uh, other countries were except China, which is true, it came from China, but India also had some clandestine arrangements. Could you please tell our viewers about that, Dr. Swami? And if Ramesh can pull out that letter and display it on the screen. Yeah, yeah, I'll just pull it out. Hang on. Dr. Swami, please enlighten our viewers. Yeah, I, I'll make it very brief because you have taken a lot of his time. I think this is one of the longest sessions we have had uh, in the recent past, at least I think it's the longest perhaps. Now, the thing is that uh, the Wuhan University Virus Center, they have, a, they have a Institute of Virus Center, that came to India at the invitation of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, which has a viral uh, virus, uh, you know, uh, uh, sub-body in Bangalore. And they, they, they went to Nagaland where there are these bats and did experiment on it in which we, uh, we were coolies essentially because all the experiments that the Wuhan University did, they packed it up and took it back to China. We got no value out of it. Second, it was without any permission and Northeast is supposed to be a restricted area. And so I, I raised it in the committee meeting. And the committee then, uh, you know, got an explanation and then an investigation. And they've just written me a letter saying, henceforth in the future, these are the uh, steps. Now, in India, nobody can start any enterprise and get money from abroad. Uh, and all these scientists of, uh, you know, these various uh, uh, places, 
uh, I mean the Tata Institute people, they all got uh, no honorariums. You can't do it unless you have FCRA clearance. And yet you see they have uh, done it uh, without any government permission. And so now they are saying in paragraph 3 that in order to further, uh, the, uh, paragraph 3 says these are the formalities. I am saying all right, but who committed the crime? If it is Ratan Tata, catch him also. You know, and uh, don't uh, you know? Let anyway. It's laws are not above below anybody. It's uh, no. We are all subject to the law. If you, they broke the law, they they should be punished for it. And therefore, uh, I I think uh, of course I'll take it to his further conclusion. But about fifty percent of my work is done as, as shown by this this letter. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Arvind, be be free. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I just want to completely conclude what Jagdish yeah, yeah. said. Uh, I just have something to say. Jagdish ji, yeah. you have a very good process absolutely given, but no vaccine. We <laughs> no, have no, a lot of vaccine. No, no, Rami. No, no. I, I disagree with you because you are not even popular. You have 10% yeah. of the population things. You yeah, are only I mean, inoculated 10%. Yes, one minute. Let me tell you. You yourself admitted there is excess thing in Tamil Nadu. One week ago, there was an absolute shortage of vaccines. But... Just now, you could go there to any center. Within 10 minutes, you can get vaccinated. Same here. Same here. So one week ago. But US, I know relatives had got four different centers. From Berkeley Heights, people had to go to Atlanta City. How far is that distance? Two hours drive. In India, it is within 10 minutes distance of your house. You get the vaccine and there is virtually walk-in. So some things which India is doing, we must appreciate. There are <laughs> other ways we are backing, I think, no beds, no uh, medicines, but on vaccination, we are slowly progressing. And there is no choice just now between the vaccination, but we are definitely progressing. This needs to, the population needs to be increased. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the only way to cope with this. This is coverage. You mean coverage. Yeah, it has to be bumped up. Because Maharashtra is doing excellent. They already administered, I mean, 10% of their administered. In the, Maharashtra is ahead of every other state in the country in terms of number of people getting in vaccinated. Yeah. But they need to yeah. still do more. But I mean, I don't know why everybody is faulting them because they are the number one state in number of vaccinations being administered. Well, uh, Jagdish belongs to that state. Hmm. <laughs> Arvind, please wind up. Okay, here. before before I wind up, uh, uh, in fact, there's no question, there's no time for asking questions. There are many questions, but I'll just mention three small issues in one minute before I wind up. One is the central government taking over the distribution of remdesivir tablet, okay, injections. Health Minister of Rajasthan, Rabu Sharma, and Health Minister of Maharashtra, Rajesh Tope, both have made this statement that the manufacturers are not giving them directly, they're refusing to give because they have been told by central government, entire production has to be given only to the central government, which will redistribute to the state. One, this is very, very discouraging because Maharashtra is suffering one of the highest proportion of the uh, uh, patients. And therefore, even uh, though Rajasthan is not very high, but still the uh, state governments, which are non-BJP governments, are making this complaint, number one. Number two, I mentioned about USA uh, putting restrictions. You know, when hydroxychlorine was uh, uh, manufactured by India and uh, 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 President Donald Trump had insisted to uh, supply this, and they said, we will have bad relations about it. They almost threatened Modi. Uh, uh, by, for giving the hydro hydroxychlorine. And why can't India do the same thing now if uh, SSI, SII is not getting the raw material? And number three, uh, just uh, uh, the difference between US and India for vaccination, we have been talking about vaccination. India has put the restriction currently of 45 plus. Whereas there is a demand by several states that everybody whosoever is willing to get vaccinated should be allowed. We don't have vaccines or we don't have vaccine facility, so we are not permitting this. Is, is, is In US, this is open to all the age groups or uh, is it also restricted to only elder, elderly people? In, no, they uh, opened it up pretty much to everybody. From tomorrow, everybody. That's we just saw it. From tomorrow, it's yes. everybody. Actually, yeah, they were giving so 18 far. and over. 18 and, and over uh, with any uh, precondition. You could, you could have just got a vaccine. Yeah. My daughter was 22. She got it. Uh, I both of us got it. So 
I, they, they are going in a different strategy depending on the size, but I think we'll be completed by the middle May and, and June. I think India should just have some target saying, let's say we'll achieve 30% by some date. I mean, uh, Dr. Swami got it and he made sure that I think people should go out there and make impression on the Indian people, get vaccinated. The, 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 see, people who are not educated, having doubts is fine, but educated people not getting vaccinated is stupidity. They're just morons, <laughs> literally. Okay. Okay. Uh, questions like this and observations uh, related to co-vaccine will be many, and uh, we already uh, uh, almost touching 90 minutes of the time. Maybe this is the <laughs> one of the longest programs uh, in recent times. Uh, thank you, to Mr. Sri Ayer, for giving such a uh, good information, such valuable information to the Indian uh, uh, viewers of this program and uh, the the what is happening in US. Good practices. In fact, generally we talk about in medical terms GMP. GMP is good manufacturing practices. Now, if we are having good medical practices in US, they should also be followed in India. So the GMP is very, very important. And uh, good suggestions made by you and Dr. Swami uh, to the government. Uh, Dr. Swami, of course, is a very influential person, also being member of the uh, Health uh, Ministry Committee. I'm sure the government of India will listen to all these suggestions made through this program. Thank you very much for sparing uh, 90 minutes for this program and giving such suggestions. Thank you, Dr. Swami, uh, for uh, uh, promoting uh, Bharat Biotech, Atmanishwarta, and so many other good things that you've done related to COVID. Thank you, Jagdish, and thank you, Ramesh Swami, for uh, uh, helping me in this program. And uh, the technical team led by Ashish Chetty, Swaminathan Nayar, Swaminathan Nayar, Tejas, Ishwar Reddy, Gadgi Rakesh, and Vishal Mehta. We'll be meeting again on Saturday in next issue of Earth Gyan Ganga, the eighth episode of Earth Gyan Ganga, and 107th episode of Words of Wisdom next, Words of Wisdom next Sunday. Thank you very much. Till then, Namaskar, Jayant.